Hey everybody, welcome back. We've got something a little different that, that we don't get in the shop too often here. Uh, this is a uh, uh, post Model 12 Mixmaster. Um, these don't these don't get a lot of love uh, for whatever reason. I think because a lot of them have uh, you know they're, they're half plastics and a lot of them have plastic bases where this one's actually got a chrome metal base. But it's still a nice looking chrome mixer nonetheless. This is a, uh, a Model 1-8B and this is a I believe 230 235 watt mixer. Um, and if you if you have this type of sunbeam and you want to find your model number, you look on the bottom here and it's, it's called a service number. Uh, this is service number 1-8B. So it's a pretty powerful machine. Um, but like I said, they just don't seem to get a lot of love and in, in chrome these things look great. Uh, the handle is is uh, detached on it and as you can see it's broken right here where it attaches. Um, but fortunately, I do have parts for these. So I've got a whole new handle, a brand new handle for it. Um, well, not brand new, but I mean, this is a, a replacement handle for it. That's in good shape. And you said the cord was brittle too, so I've got a excellent cord that we're going to be putting with this one as well. Um, so now that I've got the cord out, why don't we plug this in and give it a spin. Let's see what she sounds like. I know we're doing just maintenance on this, but uh, we're going to give us a quick, quick run through and just to see what it, what it sounds like. So actually, it doesn't sound too bad. It runs through all 12 speeds just fine. Um, you know, I, I don't really see any issues with it. So I think it is just a maintenance thing that we're that we're going to be doing on this here. Um, so that would be pretty cool. Um, I think I want to start with pulling off our label on the front here, and. bit tricky. Let's see if you guys can see. Um, you know, you don't want to destroy them when you take them off. So, but they are just glued on here. So, the best way to handle that is just to give a little bit of heat. Set your heat down on low, or hit it with a hair dryer, and just warm it up. I mean, you don't want it to get hot. So you just want to get warm to the touch, and then you can try and work it off very gently. See, I can slide right through the glue because the glue is nice and warm. And if you try and do this without warming up the glue, you also run the risk of, you know, bending or kinking this, which you also don't want to do. You want to be able to just slide right through the glue effortlessly. And as you see, it's just going to come right off for me. There, and there's the glue. We'll clean this off, and uh, then we can just re-glue that back on there when we're done. Uh, but the glue is like really tacky right now, just because we warmed it up. So that's all you got to do to get your front covers off. You don't want to just try prying them off and bending them off because they will get messed up on you. for some disassembly here. And I'm going to need a bigger screwdriver. And maybe some bigger muscles. These aren't all that tough to get off. Oh. 
All right, I'm gonna have to work with this on my lap here. All right, I just set it in my lap there to get a little more leverage on it to break this loose. Not that we've got it coming off. here is a spring and the spring kind of fits in a slot in there and that's what keeps tension against this to keep pressed to the front. Um, now we can take this off and you can see you know there's some flour build up on there and on the inside of there. So we'll clean that off. Alright so now this has got a ejector assembly here that when you turn the handle on this one, on, on these kind, you see it just pushes down that plate right there, and that's what ejects your beaters. So, not liking that, it feels like if you push back too far, that will come out, but I want to get that off right there. So you guys can see here, you guys even in view here, not really. Sorry about that. All right, so with that little bolt out, this bottom cover will come right off. And you see that's kind of dirty too. Okay, it's just flour, so. Um, Really not that big a deal. We can unhook our spring from here. Pull that right out. And if we unhook the top on here, we can go ahead and finagle our ejector piece out. Alright, now under here somewhere there's a couple screws. And then this will pop off this whole front plate here. Okay, so now that's off. And that can all be cleaned. Right, spin it around to the back. Now these are a little tricky here. Alright, but anyways, I just want to pop this out. Oh, this one only had two. No wonder I couldn't find all three. This had two. Um, and one of them is broken. So, I'll have to see. I think I got another one of these as well. Um, but anyways, once you pull these out, you know, you, you know, you put, bend your tabs down, you can pull them out. Um, now we can take off this dial in the back here. And this whole speed control mechanism on these looks entirely different than what you're used to seeing. Of course, it's all caked with flour too. So I'm sure he's been used. All right, as you can see, this is a completely different, different style um, speed control on here. Um, it works almost the, the same way you know, with the with the dial. If you look in here, you see there's a ramp on here for your speed, which runs against this little nub right here. Okay, and the on-off switch on these is this right here. 
That's off. That's on. Off on. All right. So now we can start separating the two halves on here. There's four screws that hold them together. And what we're going to be doing is just taking this plastic cover top half off. And I need to lift your cover right off. All right. Detent can come right out. Let's see if I can get you guys a good view of this here. I'll figure out how to get you guys to see this well. That may work. All right. You see there's a lot of flour build up here on top of the gearbox, which is of course going to be a little greasy, so it's going to be somewhat sticky. But all that's got to get cleaned off. Here's your fan, and then you got a bushing under here, and then under the gearbox there's another bushing right there, and the brushes are right here. So, we're going to start with our gearbox. gearbox cover off. It looks like this bushing here is wanting to come with it, so, which of course it won't. Alright, so we can clean that off. And you can see the bushing I was talking about in here. And these are designed to be permanently lubricated, but like everything else, they were never, they never expect them to run this long, so uh, once you get to this point here, um, most likely there's no lubrication in these bushings at all. And you can see there's a lot of uh, crud all over these uh, shafts here. Okay, there's these little metal caps here. They gotta get popped off. They're just like press fit on there. Okay, and the best way that I found to get these off is to just get a little screwdriver up in there. And uh, these these are slit. They have slits in them, and uh, the teeth basically grip into here. The edges, the edges of these grip into here. The best way I found is to get a small screwdriver in there and just try to pry up where the, uh, you know, where it grips and just loosen up the, the grip on it. And this one's really stuck on there. Normally they'll pop right off with just a little bit of effort. There. Okay, got that off. I take the felt wick out of there. And now, the shaft should pop right out. Okay, well, there's a buildup on here, but um, with only these, you'll, you'll be able to slide your shafts right out. And also, keep in mind, what, this has a juicer port on it, and that engages on this shaft right here. So you want to just mine that. When you, take it apart, or mainly when you put it back together. You want to mind where that shaft goes so that you don't, if you put it in the wrong spot, you're obviously not going to be able to hook up your juicer. So I'm going to pop this other one off and we'll be right back. Okay, that other one popped off much easier. And the shaft, of course, popped out a lot easier as well. So I know it's going to get degreased, and now we can get the grease that's built up inside here out. And you guys can see how thick and waxy that looks. Alright, that's good enough for now. Alright. Oops, don't knock my lamp over. Alright, I'm going to take some stuff off on the back here. I'll show you guys the speed control and where the resistor's at on these. Because these also have uh, the same type of resistor as, uh, you know, like the Model, the model uh, 10s, 11s, and 12s. Um, well, there's three screws that hold this one on. This one right here, you pretty much only have to loosen up. And then you can pull these two out.
By the way, it's Friday the 13th, so uh, happy Friday the 13th to anybody that cares. Okay, so you do have to be careful of uh, your speed control assembly here. It's got a pin that goes into the armature. I'm going to just take the screw all the way out. Um, you do have to be careful of that. And you can see it right here. So, once you get this out, you also have some wiring you have to watch out for here. In this case, it's pressed down on the side here. There we go. Okay. Now I can show you guys the resistor. These have the same type of resistor and they test the exact same way. In fact, I mean, this one's nice, it doesn't have any corrosion on it or anything, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to test that one right now. So we're going to prop this up. And you guys can see. Set it to ohms. And let's see if we get a reading on here. reading about 140 which seems a little low yeah 144 so I'm to look to see if I have another one I can replace this with I mean I think that one may still work at 140 but it's not in the range that it should be. So if we have another one to replace that with, we will. Alright, so as you see, test that basically the same way. Alright, so I'm going to move these wires and the speed control out of the way here. And you can see, you know, you just pull your clips straight out. It's hard to see through the dust on this, but... that little pin which I was going to show you guys. Alright, so we've got this all unclipped. This little pin fits, you can see there's a, it's got a slotted in on it and then there's a slot slotted in on there, slot down the side here that fits in there like that and this goes inside the back of the armature. Oops, you guys haven't been able to see much have you? Alright, so what held this one the wires on here was these clips. You have a clip here on the back here. Let me get this thing right, facing the right direction here. Um, you got a clip that goes here, and a clip that goes here for your wiring. And this is your speed control mechanism right there with your on off switch and your speed control. All right. So now that we've got that done, we're going to take our brushes out. And I can't get you guys a very good view on here, but if I tilt it, I can show you. Right here is the screws to hold the brush holders on. You just want to be careful taking these off so your brushes don't go flying. Alright, and they pull straight up and then you can check your brushes and as you can tell already on this one the length is nice and long. So we know that brush is good. And I'm assuming this will be the same way. And this one doesn't look like it's, this whole machine doesn't look like it's got a lot of wear on it. Um, I mean, if anything, it looks more, you know, like it's had some use, but 
basically just needs the maintenance from you know due to age. Okay, so now the brush holder is disconnected. We're gonna take off our cover back here. God, I wish you guys could see better. Um, but we've got a cover right here that covers up this rear bushing. There's a cover for the rear bushing. We'll put that with the screws that go with it. I gotta get that other screw out from down there yet. Um, but alright, but now you can't pull this out yet because you gotta pull that with the field coil out all in one assembly. And then there's two screws on either side that lock the field coil down. And basically, you just wanna remove those. And so I don't drop any more down inside there. Let's pull them out with the pliers. Alright, so now make sure our cord connection here is free. Uh, we've got, there's a capacitor that's tucked in the side here. We can pull everything out in one shot, and that capacitor should just pop right out. There we go. Hmm. There's a wire that goes over from a capacitor to the cord connection. Something's holding it in here, and I can't see what. There's that screw. Pull the armature out. Now you can get a good look at the armature with the bushings on it. And you can see there's really no wear on this armature at all. So I just need to polish it up. I'm going to set that aside. And i got to try and find out what is, uh, what is holding this on here. Aside from a bunch of flour. All right, it seems to be tucked behind that plastic piece there. Alright. I'm going to remove the uh, height adjustment here. to pop that plate out. Now we can pull this wire out. Alright, so, so you guys can see, there's our entire field coil and, and all the wiring and the, and the brushes right there, so that can all be cleaned up. Sorry, I'm not giving you guys a very good view of this, so. This is a tough one to get a view of, but we do have it all apart now. And you can see all this left in here is out a bunch of flour, let's move this bed cover out of the way, and uh, clean out a bunch of flour and a bunch of grease there, and at the front of the armature, uh, there's also a metal piece here, which is, it's good. this just goes right back in there, and the armature rides against that, and it's got a little nub on there, and this is just to, to give uh, some thrust against the armature, so that's going to get cleaned up as well, but for now, I'm going to go, I'm going to get this all cleaned up, and uh, get the rest of the parts cleaned up, and then we'll come back and get everything put back together. Alright, so we've got everything cleaned up, polished, everything that we need to do, and we're ready to start putting everything back together. Um, there are some long, thin oil wicks here that loop, that keep these lubricated, and this is uh, what they did to permanently lubricate it. They just uh, soaked these wicks with oil. And basically, this is... Uh, this is the oil that ended up lubricating the um, 
the, the bushings, you know, as oil would draw through the bushings being porous. So we're just going to make sure we go and get these soaked up good again. Alright, so now we've got that part done. We can go ahead and we can get the rest of our motor assembly in here. And, um, it's a little bit tricky. You know, we cleaned off what we could clean off here too. Um, you, know, you see you've got your, your assembly here with the with your cord connection and everything else on it. It goes on one side. Um, you've got your armature as well that goes in there. But before we put the armature in, we'll try and run the one side over since that, that wire goes under the armature. Put it going like that. Wiring is probably the trickiest part of this whole thing. Alright, yeah. So that goes like that. And you gotta remember you got some spinning parts in here too, so you're trying hard to keep all your wiring away from everything that's spinning. Now that we've got this in place, there's a uh, like a paper backer on here that goes in there. Um, so we'll make sure you got all that in place as well. Just make sure nothing's hitting anywhere. find our, our little uh, thrust piece here. I want to make sure that's lined up with the tip of the armature. trickiest part is just making sure everything gets nice and lined up good. Alright, so once you got that done, you can fasten down your uh, fuel coil. Go ahead and get those tightened up. Now you can get your uh, brush holders attached back in here. And these as well will only go in one spot. I mean, there's only one place where they fit on here. Alright. Now we've got a cap that goes over here. Um, but we're going to go and give this a little bit of extra oil in here. There's no binding. Yeah, everything spins nice and free. Um, double check also your wires again just to make sure that, that there's nothing that's going to be contacting anything moving. Alright, we're going to get our speed control ready to put back in. Um, at this point I have no more resistors. I really have no source to get any. Uh, this resistor still had resistance on it. It read a little bit low. I think it will be all right on here. So we're going to go ahead and just run with this one. And we're going to go ahead and just reattach all of our wiring. And they're just push connectors. wires tucked right back down in here because you've got this fan that spins right here and the last thing that you want is to have, uh, have any wire contacting that fan. 
so you want to real carefully tuck them back down inside. Because there's a metal wall. When you tuck them down in there, you end up having a metal wall in between um, in between the blade of the fan and the wires. keeps them nice and protected. Alright, so now we just got to put our little rod on here. Which I probably could have done this before I got all my wires tucked. It would have been a little easier, but we'll get it. Alright, so you want it engaged in there. Get there, run it in the back of the armature. There. Alright, now you get everything lined up. Reattach your screws. Alright, so at this point, the inside part here is just about done. You want to route your wire here behind this wall to this, this fan is. There's one that you definitely don't want to have your wires near that fan because that's that sucker spins fast and it'll shred them. So it doesn't help to double check and triple check all your wiring right there. All right, so we've got the gearbox to do. I'm gonna throw some grease down in there. Okay, so when you're putting these gears in, you've got dots on the top. I don't know if you can see these dots right here. Let's see if I can tilt it a little bit. I'm going to show you what these dots are. There's a dot right there and a dot right there. What you want to do is you want to have them 45 degrees apart. So this one you can have facing this way and then that one clocked like that. Or this one could even be up at, you know, 12 o'clock and then this one right here you want at a 45 one way or the other to that one and that should set your beater timing uh, it's a little tricky but you can always stick beaters in there to make sure as well uh, that's always another option but anyways now we've got the we've got our uh, shafts and gears set um, just want to find my grease right in front of me so we'll loop this up and we can get our gearbox cover on Now you can put your gearbox cover on. And it should just go down and line right up. And so you get your gearbox cover on, being that that holds the, the bushing for the front of the armature as well as keeping the gears in, uh, then you can go ahead and plug it in and give it a test and see if everything's working all right. We got that in, we're going to make sure once again nothing's hitting. And we'll grab our cord. Go ahead and plug this in.
it's how it runs. Uh, seems to run good. Um, speed control works, all that. So we'll go ahead and plug it. We can get everything else wrapped up. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention um, was this piece right here actually went down underneath here and uh, had this this raised area right here above. There's some fins down here, and that was actually when I took it out. It was packed almost full with rock hard flour. So basically, all that was doing was blocking off the vent down here, which is I think why there was so much flour up against the front of the of the motor there, even though the front does have vents as well, um, you know, to, to vent on that, everything would have to basically run, you know, from the fan, you know, across the top, and, and there was none coming through on the bottom here, so you, you want ventilation going across the whole motor, so I'd left that out right there for, you know, to get a little more ventilation, and hopefully it won't get built up the way this one here was, because that was packed with a lot of flour there, um, so I decided to leave that out, um, all right. So we can go ahead and we can start getting everything else wrapped up on here. We've got to get our collars on the bottom that you know that go on our shafts. Um, get our top housing on. Uh, replace our handle. Get our beater ejector. All that stuff on. So let's go ahead and start knocking some of that out now. This one all completed now. You guys got to see most of the uh, uh, most of the maintenance that's involved in one of these. Um, it is different than the other ones, uh, but it's doable. I mean, they weren't designed to be you know to have any maintenance done, but as you can tell, you can definitely take the part and do it. Um, we did uh, replace the handle on it. We also replaced the, the broken back piece here with a different one that I happen to have. We replaced the resistor in here and. Um, now it's good to go. I mean, it's got all new grease. Everything, all, all the bushings are are well lubricated again to last for quite a few more years. Uh, we, we we're sending a different cord along with it, one that's not brittle. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, fire this up and and uh, give her a listen to. As you can tell, this is, like I said, a very, uh, very underrated machine. Um, I don't think they get enough love from the community as they should. Uh, it's a very powerful machine. Um, you know, these things got 235 watts, so you can actually use dough hooks with these machines, which is a bonus uh, for anybody that that you know always asks about dough hooks and stuff. Um, this is the type of machine that you want to be looking for um, if if you're into the sunbeams. Um, but anyways, uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and you know that's the only way that we're gonna know that you like it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified of any other new videos that we post. Uh, we've got a few decent things coming up, decent projects, so uh, you don't want to miss out on those. But um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks.